Hi, it's me. I'm Char. I think many of you might know this. I like to animate. But I've actually only ever used one program to animate almost all of my work. I grew up during the macromedia flash days of the internet and started animation as a hobby back when deviant art games and animations were still really popular. If you played Pack Thesis games and watched the Law of Talos animations, hello, my brothers. As you can see, I wasn't really the best at it back then, but I kept practicing. So naturally, I grew up learning Flash, which we all know now as Adobe Animate. As I got more and more into how animation works though, I found myself wishing for a lot of other tools that Animate just doesn't really have. And along the way, I've been on the path of trying new programs to see what might fit my needs now that I'm aware of what those needs are. This video is going to cover my experience with one of those programs, Clip Studio Paint, a widely used illustration program which is also used by several animation studios for its animation tools and features. I'm honestly really excited about making this video because right as I was about to start trying Clip Studio Paint out for animation, Celsius, the developers of Clip Studio Paint, actually reached out to me via email to ask if I wanted to make a video to cover its animation tools. And of course I said yes! <laughs> it felt like a really lucky, really coincidental motivational push. So just to initiate the uninitiated, Clip Studio Paint or CSP is a program mainly used for illustration with a strong focus on manga and webtoon features. It has this sparkly webtoon brush and comic layouts that you can use on the fly. And it's also an animation program. If you've seen those drawing time-lapse videos on Twitter or Instagram, there's a strong chance it's made in CSP, since it's also pretty popular for its time-lapse recording feature. I bought CSP as a replacement for Photoshop a couple years back for making background art for my animations, since both the default and user-made brushes helped my process a lot. But I've also been using it for doodles and sketches, since I really like the felt-tip marker brush. When I bought it back then, there was a sale for the perpetual license, so I, it was a pretty easy decision for me to make. And I even gifted my friend a copy around that time. Anyway, for this video, I'll be showing you how I approached animating in CSP. Quick disclaimer, I don't work in the animation industry. I do it mainly as a hobby and as freelance work. So don't take my process as a guide on how to animate professionally. For good animation advice, I highly suggest you check out channels like Dong Chang and Tony Pantoya. They're both professionals in the industry and I really like their videos. I vouch. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to try to do things off the bat first, so without a tutorial or anything, essentially my realest, truest first impression, which I'm kind of expecting will not go too well since I'm not the quickest to catch on. And then I'll watch and read a couple tutorials. And then I'll try to make a short animated video. This is what I ended up making by the way, so you don't have to skip to the end to know what it looks like. A majority of the YouTube shorts and Instagram reels I get are all just cat videos, so I thought I'd make my own, despite my lack of cat. <laughs> I'll explain the process of how I made this in more detail later. Anyway, let's start. <laughs> I'm gonna yap so hard, I'm sorry. I would say I spent around 15 minutes just messing around, figuring out how to animate something what the tools were, how to navigate, what anything was. <laughs> I don't know what this means. Oh. Creating an animation file, you can really see that it's something used by animation studios, having presets for scenes and stories and file names for better organization. I have to be genuine and confess that I don't really know how any of this works. I just set the resolution and frame rate to my usual and kind of called it a day from there. To be fair, this was also how I set up my older animation files, just the resolution and frame rate. So, yes. <laughs> it automatically opens up with a nice little frame border with the scene name written on the lower left. My first instinct was to open the timeline window to see how animating things worked. Window. Timeline, there. Ooh, there it is. So how does this work? Can I... Can I... After stumbling a bit, I eventually figured out how to put in frames, or animation cells. I made an animation folder in my timeline, which is to me kind of like a layer for your frames, and I placed animation cells inside to indicate a new frame. Each frame here is a CSP layer, and the animation folder is, well, the one that contains all of those frames, as you can see in the layer window. Coming from Flash, the structure is definitely different, 
But once you grasp that frames are layers and folders are layers, <laughs> it becomes pretty intuitive in your head. With this knowledge, I tried, keyword tried, to create a bouncing ball with just my wits. I'm kind of getting it. Not gonna lie. Okay, let's see if that works. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that good. Am I really an animator? This is insane. So, first impressions? I think I got pretty far without knowing anything beforehand. The timeline was definitely different from what I was used to, but it was relatively easy to understand, especially with how the UI structured it. Little thumbnails for my frames, my layers named the same as my animation cells, onion skin, tooltips for each button, which helped a lot. I was pretty sure after assigning a few shortcuts and getting used to the tools a bit more that a short animation would definitely be doable. That being said, I finally looked up tutorials! Yay! <laughs> CSP has a dedicated webpage called Clip Studio Tips full of beginner tutorials for illustration, manga, webtoons, and animation. I looked up a quick animation overview, and then with my previous bouncing ball experience, I started sketching out an animation like I would normally do in any other program. I was actually also really excited to try out CSP's 3D reference models. I've seen this being used on Twitter posts before, but yeah, you can import a 3D model into the scene and edit it around and use it for posing reference or whatever you need. I tried it out for this one, just for fun, because I really wanted to try it out. <laughs> I still wasn't very used to it at that point, but I was pretty happy to be able to sketch things with a regular brush. For context, the usual program I use is purely focused on vector art, or in other words, all my brush strokes were made using paths and curves. As a result, I would never be able to get naturally fuzzy or painterly brush strokes on any of my animations, and there wasn't a lot of room for me to experiment there, because that requires raster layers, which illustration programs like CSP are well known for. Funnily enough, my first concern was actually whether I could do vector lines for line art. This is pretty important to me because I often adjust small things in my drawings, and I would hate to have to redraw parts over and over again just because I couldn't make it look right to me. Vector lines are also just easier to clean up in general. Luckily, vector line art is actually a thing for CSP, and it's honestly really really good. Uh, good to the point where I kind of wanted to transition animation software immediately. For starters, vector lines in CSP can be made with any brush. I was, I was so surprised by that. I could essentially draw in the fuzziest brush and make adjustments to the brush stroke however I wanted after I drawn it. I didn't record audio for this time lapse, but I audibly gasped when I found out. Finally, texture. <laughs> I was a bit worried at first that I wouldn't be able to fill in the lines though, because CSP doesn't really offer a vector fill tool per se. But then I found out that the regular fill tool had an option to refer to other layers and fill up to vector paths, which meant all I had to do was create a new animation folder for the color. And then I'd have the vector line art and color easily and any way I wanted to on the other layer. I don't think you understand how mind blowing this is for me. It suddenly felt like I had so many creative avenues to explore. It was crazy. Okay, but the part that made me kick my feet in excitement was cleanup. There is an eraser here specifically for vector lines that erases the line until it hits an intersection. This is the best! <laughs> cleanup has always been the most tedious and annoying thing for me when it came to animating, and with this tool, the process sped up exponentially. What probably would take me an hour and a half to clean only took me around 20 minutes to clean with this feature. Vector layers in CSP? They are now my favorite thing. <laughs> Here's what the result looked like. For coloring, I decided to separate it into three folders. Shadows, highlights, and main color. I was thinking of just using a blending mode to blend the shadows and highlights in so that I wouldn't have to manually place in the colors and it worked out pretty okay. I used blue for the shadows and it was pretty smooth sailing with the fill tool, which, again, was referring to my line art layer. That's still so cool to me. And I used a yellow-orange for the highlights. 
Here's what it looked like after I finished. Filling in the main colors also went pretty okay, save for a few things. For one, it was a bit hard to find the right settings for the fill tool so that it'd fill up the lines nicely. There are times where I had to manually color over spots that weren't colored correctly or spots that left gaps. I had to do a bit of guesswork now and then when I wanted to fill up a spot. It felt really nice to use softer brushes for coloring. Coloring in the blush on the character's cheeks just meant I had to lightly brush it in on the color layer, and making the cat look fuzzy just meant I had to outline the patterns with a fuzzier brush. I also struggled a lot figuring out how to draw the cat's fur patterns, but that's my own skill issue. I decided to finish off the coloring by changing the color of the line art. For this, I rasterized my vector lines so that they'd be regular raster layers. I applied lock transparent pixels on the layer, and I quickly brushed over the inner lines of each frame to give it a softer look. Here's the whole thing animated. An additional thing before I wrap the process up, but I was made aware that CSP also had an audio feature, and it was surprisingly pretty usable. At, at least like more than what I expected. I didn't even expect it to support audio, actually, if that gives it a bit more perspective. I usually add sound effects in post for better quality. How it works is that you can have one layer with several mp3 sounds on it, and you can add in volume keyframes, meaning you can choose to make the sound fade in or out, become softer or louder. I had to re-download sound effects from Zapsplat, which is where I get my sounds by the way, since I get a lot of questions asking where I get them. Since Flash mainly accepts .wave for sounds, and CSP uses .mp3. So it's a bit of a hassle on my end, I'll likely keep adding sounds in post instead, since I add a lot of effects to them there anyway, but I find it really useful that you have the ability to add in sounds and adjust their volume within CSP itself. Exporting was really easy, I exported the animation as an mp4, and that was it. That was pretty fun. While I'm writing this, I suddenly feel like a lot of doors have opened for me to experiment creatively, and I'm really excited about it. I was already feeling really limited by the software I was previously using, but I didn't know how limited I was until I tried this out. Let me quickly summarize how I felt about using CSP as an animation software. Bits and pieces of my process changed, but I think that comes with the territory of change in general. For longer animations, it makes a lot more sense to have a CSP file per scene and compiling them all after, rather than how I would previously just have an entire 2 minute animation in one file. This is because layers in particular get a bit messy as you add more and more frames and elements to the scene. There's a lot more creative liberty when it comes to drawing. I've always wanted to animate with raster layers, but it was always either the software didn't allow it, or the software's UI made it feel too tedious or too complicated to compromise. CSP had the benefit of being familiar to both the illustration and vector animation side of my work. It felt like a fusion between Animate and Photoshop, and I eventually started feeling comfortable with it after a few hours. I think one thing I'd love to have as a feature is being able to place filters on the camera. Although the application has a dedicated camera movement feature, I wasn't able to find anything on applying something like blur or glow to my entire scene by placing that specific filter on the camera. Since it wasn't available, in order to create a blur effect, I had to manually blur some frames, but it's honestly something you can also easily do during post-production with a video editor. Overall, I think I'll actually start slowly transitioning to using CSP for animation. It's definitely going to be tough, since I have been using Flash, Animate, whatever you want to call it, for over a decade at this point. But I think change is good, and I think I'll be able to make and have more fun with future animations given what I know about it now. In the end, to each their own software, and I just thought this program was a lot of fun. Again, a warm thank you to Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring this video. It was a really cool surprise to be sponsored by them, and if this is something you want to try out, it's available to use on both PC and mobile. And if you're not sure whether you like it yet or not, they do have a free trial you can utilize to see if it's for you. I've left a link in the description for you to check those out. If you're still here, <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's been a while since I've posted anything like this. Life has been really busy with work and a lot of family things and stuff, and 
I'm really happy that even a handful of people enjoy my work and let me yap as much as I want. I'm always really grateful about having opportunities like this, and I hope I'm able to bring you as much joy as you bring me. If you guys have any tips on CSP animation or even just illustration, I would say I'm still pretty new to the program. Feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'd appreciate any advice you guys might have. Listed on screen are my YouTube and Coffee Lasagna supporters. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me, and I hope you have a great day today. Okay, bye.